Hey, Happy Friday. This week, Microsoft confirmed that the Xbox App Store is coming to Android and iOS really soon. OnePlus made a triumphant return, and iMessage for Android is real. Kind of real this time. <laughs> Welcome to the Friday Checkout. This video was sponsored by our streaming service, Nebula. This week, we start to brief with Apple, where we got solid rumors that the 2024 iPad Pro will be Apple's first ever OLED model, and also that there should be a 13-inch Air model, too. And meanwhile, still in Apple land, the company joined the AI race by releasing MLX, a new machine learning framework for Apple Silicon that lets the AI and the machine learning community use its M-series chips and their onboard GPUs and NPUs to train and deploy models. Take that, NVIDIA CUDA, I guess. <laughs> Then, in even bigger AI news, Google unveiled Gemini this week, its much-anticipated AI model that will replace Lambda. And Gemini comes in three tiers. Ultra, which is a paid high-end model that claims to beat GPT-4 on most tests. Then there is the Pro, which is now powering BARD, starting in English. And third, there is the Nano, which can run locally on device, like how it now handles the Google Pixel 8 Pro's various on-device AI features, like smart replies, summaries, etc. This is Google flexing some real AI muscles here. Hey, uh, Editing Martin here. Right as I was about to publish this video, we learned that Gemini demos were at least partially faked. They were sped up. They didn't use the drawings, really. In real life, they used photos instead. And they also didn't talk to the Gemini AI like they showed in the demo, but they actually used text prompts. So that's kind of weird. But anyway, back to the real video. Then moving on to absolutely insane news, Apple and Google both confirmed that governments are spying on their users through push notifications on your phone. The notifications themselves actually go through Apple's and Google's servers, and many of these aren't encrypted at all, so court orders can force these tech giants to reveal what's in them, and at the very least their metadata if the contents themselves are encrypted. Wild. Then we also got some good security news, in particular that Meta announced that it is finally rolling out end-to-end -end encryption for Facebook messengers, at least for one-to-one -one chats and calls. They're using the Signal protocol, so that's great, but keep in mind that group chats won't have encryption on by default. I guess that's still a net positive. And then in a complete surprise this week, the second largest company selling wearables behind Apple became Imagine Marketing, according to IDC, which is the company that sells really cheap electronics under the Bolt brand, often bought from China and rebranded for the India market. They reached the number two spot worldwide with this strategy. Kind of crazy. And finally for the brief, Microsoft announced that it is offering regular consumers paid Windows 10 security updates after the OS goes end of life in 2024 at which point Windows 10 will be turning 10 years old. This is the first time that regular consumers are going to get the option to pay for extended support, and even though we don't know the price yet, this is pretty cool. Okay, and for my first story of the week, Microsoft officially confirmed that they're bringing a gaming-focused app store to Android and iOS, and really soon. We got our first hints of this back in March this year, but given that the EU's Digital Markets Act fully comes into effect in March next year, both Google and Android will theoretically have to let Microsoft do their thing. Phil Spencer, the head of gaming at Microsoft, said that, quote, I don't think this is multiple years away, I think this is sooner than that. Sooner than multiple years? That's corporate speak for basically one year or less, which means definitely 2024. Phil specifically talked about launching the store with partners, which I guess means big game studios, but that means the company will have real tough competition. We know that Google offered a single publisher, Activision, $360 million just to stay with the Play Store, and Google Slides suggested that the company would spend almost $2 billion from 2019 to 2022 on play risk mitigation to stop them launching outside of the Google Play Store. Other developers were also offered really high sums, so I guess Microsoft will have to create some pretty lucrative offers here if they want to win. And I bet that the most lucrative gaming strategy of 2024 will be to just pretend that you want to build an app store and then just to watch Google, Apple, and Microsoft throw money at you to tell you to please not do it. Now, of course, Microsoft did just buy one of the largest mobile gaming companies in the world with the Activision Blizzard and King deal, which is a company that owns multiple mobile juggernauts like Candy Crush, so I guess they do have some ammunition for the fight. 
Okay, and for my second story of the week, the OnePlus 12 has just launched in China, and I'm actually cautiously optimistic for the brand after a few really weird years. So the Chinese launch happened on the 5th of December, with an international one coming soon, probably on the 24th of January, and the company seems to have made some really big upgrades. As one would expect, the 12 got all the OnePlus typical high-end specs, a Snapdragon 8th Gen 3, up to 24 gigs of RAM, a 5400 mAh battery, 100 watt wired fast charging, etc. But this year, OnePlus also brought back wireless charging, and at 50 watts, no less, it bumped the IP rating to IP65, and it got a really impressive camera upgrade as well. There's a 3x periscope zoom lens and an ultrawide, both with really large sensors, and a 50 megapixel main shooter that comes with Sony's new Lightia 808 technology too. This is the sensor tech that I've mentioned a few times in my Friday checkouts that uses dual layer stacking, and if this camera setup sounds familiar, that is because it's almost exactly the same as the already fantastic OnePlus Open, just with a few minor improvements. So the 12 got huge upgrades, it's now more in the ultra or the pro max territory of devices, and yet, despite this, it only went up by about $40 in price in China, which is really aggressive. We can see that the ultraification strategy is super successful for Samsung and Apple and other brands, so I guess OnePlus decided to abandon trying to build a budget flagship and instead just went all out on building an ultra one. And given that the company's OnePlus Open was also super well received, I feel like we're looking at a pretty great comeback story from OnePlus overall. Now I just wish we could finally buy all the Oppo and OnePlus products here in Germany and most of Europe again. Gimme. <laughs> okay, and for my third story of the week, we have to talk about iMessage and Android again for what feels like the 27th time or something like that, but this time I think it's good news. So after the absolute security disaster that nothing vomited on the scene with their chats app, and after Apple kind of half-embraced RCS, a new app called Beeper Mini just launched, which takes yet another approach. Instead of routing your messages through a random iMac server farm somewhere, a developer reverse-engineered how the actual iMessage technology works, and then Beeper basically hired him to make an app that lets you use iMessage right from your Android phone. The blog post even says that they got true end-to-end -end encryption working, which I really hope this time around is not a scam. And you can just sign up for an Apple ID if you want on the phone, it gives you a fake Apple device ID, you then authenticate with an Apple server, and you're done. Real, fake, blue bubbles. And what's also cool is that Beeper says that this app will eventually add SMS, RCS, FaceTime, and other chat technologies in the near future too. The service does cost $2 a month, but I guess that's still vastly preferable to being ditched by your Tinder date or something like this for thinking that you're poor, despite you having a $1,800 folding phone. Well, anyway. Now, of course, you might be wondering whether Apple will just kill this service, and the answer is maybe not. We think Apple currently doesn't know which iMessage user is authenticating from Beeper, so they shouldn't be able to kick you out unless Apple changes how their system works, and reverse engineering is also somewhat protected under US law, so Apple might not be able to sue them either. That said, anything might happen. I'm not a lawyer and Apple might do whatever they please. They can change their technology. They can release iMessage on Android for free or with a subscription, who knows. Okay, and before we finish up, I actually have an update because people really like them. We actually brought back lifetime memberships for Nebula. That's right, a lifetime subscription to our very own video streaming service. And because we are now in the holiday seasons, we even made them giftable like a cute little digital gift card. So why are we a service with ongoing costs offering a lifetime membership? membership, and who should and shouldn't get one. Well, here's how we think about it. Since we stopped our cooperation with CuriosityStream, Nebula pays for its own marketing and for creating new originals as well, completely out of pocket. This works and it's sustainable, but it's also a little bit slow, and since we have a lot of really big ideas for content, we're looking to speed things up. A normal streaming service company like Netflix would typically go to venture capitalists and sell part of their company for a pile of cash, but that also means giving up creative control over what they do. We don't want to, and we don't have to do that, because unlike Netflix, we actually know you, our viewers, and you know us, and so we can just ask you for your support. And that's what a lifetime membership for Nebula actually does. It helps us supercharge our content production right now instead of having to wait until later. We plan to go really big on Nebula Originals, much bigger than what we've done so far, and I've just pitched a new Nebula Original series myself earlier this week. And if you haven't seen it yet, we also have a whole fantastic catalog of existing originals on Nebula already, like China Actually, The Logistics of X, Red Atoms, and my very own Technorama series and more. Of course, regular Nebula subscriptions are still available at just 30 bucks for an entire year with my link as well. If you don't want a huge 
commitment, that's super cool too, but now until the end of the year, lifetime is an option too. So check out Nebula at the links in the description, be sure to use those links because then you help me out directly and I'll see you in the next video.